this is Turn One Thoughtsies. I'm Aaron. And I'm Zach. And uh, so some stuff got unbanned. We were 25% right, for the record. Bloodbraid Elf did get unbanned. Hey, doesn't it make us 50, 50% right? Because we got half, no, we half said, of the announcement said, right? Well, we said the Ancient Stirrings was going to get banned. Oh, did we or, actually uh, say that? Yeah, okay, I think so. That's fair. I did. Fair. All right. Yeah, I don't... A, a decision we talked about unbannings. Fair. Yes. So we are fifty percent right on unbannings. Correct. Okay. All right. So <laughs> obviously, the thing that everybody came here to hear is about Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah, I talked on Twitter very briefly about how I wasn't going to talk about it. <laughs> Pretty much, like I will, uh, like cards on the table. Like I, I think it is a mistake. It is their mistake to make, and if if they were going to make this particular mistake, doing it right before it gets reprinted, so at least there are copies available that are in print, is the best time to do it. Like, I agree with you, but before we get too far into the specifics, let's hit the basic stuff. So, I... I know it's probably clear to people now, and they probably already know if they're listening to this cast, but the announcement was that Jace the Mind Sculptor and Bloodbraid Elf got unbanned. And there's been a lot made of it, because obviously there was a modern PT a week ago, right? Yes. And a lot of people are saying this format is awesome, um, it's super diverse, there's a ton of fun decks, it felt pretty balanced. Why now? Why are we making this decision now? And if you read... If you read their explanation for the unbanning, um, they make a lot of points, but none of them, a lot of people kind of just took that they're trying to make money off of it. And to me, the bigger point was that they looked at the modern field from the PT and decided now was safe. And a lot of people just glossed over that point and didn't really take into consideration what that meant. But we're going to give you a quick list to kind of help you understand why they thought it was okay right now. And yes, changing a format that was great might have been bad. Like, this could prove to be a poor decision. But the evidence from the Pro Tour is suggesting that it could be okay. So, Aaron, you want to give them the the quick rundown of any card that cost 4 CMC and was played at sorcery speed that got played in the Pro Tour at all? Uh, There were not many. Um, Hostage Taker appeared in the sideboard of a couple of humans builds. Scape Shift was there. Um, it did not do well. Um, Tezzer Agent of Bolus was in the side of Lantern as a post-board win condition. Um, Supreme Verdict, Jace Architect of Thought, and Thought Not Seer, even though he's sort of an honorable mention because he kind of cost two. Or th- or three, yeah, like mostly three right now. But y- he can cost two for sure, and and that's pretty much it. Yeah, I, I mean, mean you I'm- can you can go further. Like I think when we were talking about it, like Ugin came up as a four drop in Tron. Yes, and um, a position that I would stand by. Yeah, and I, I think that counts as a four drop. But like at the same time, it's not a four CMC card. Like part of the reason you can sure. play it is that it's an eight CMC card you cast on turn four, right? Like, it, it, it does have the abilities of something that costs 8, and that's what it feels like when it's on the battlefield, is like, this thing costs 8, how do I beat it? It's absurd. It's just exiling my whole board every turn, you know? Right. Um. So, yeah, I mean, if you look at it, there are very, very few 4-mana sorcery speed cards that see play at all. So, uh, what they're kind of posturing here is that 4-mana sorcery speed cards... Don't do well in Modern. It's a format mostly about casting one, two, even zero mana spells. And uh, these ones are particularly fair. There's not very many ways to to cheat on mana with Bloodbraid Elf or Jason Mind Sculptor. In fact, the decks that prefer to play these cards are attrition-based, grindy decks that just kind of cast them and use them for their power. So... If well, we'll we'll come back to that because I I I have some I have some thoughts in that direction. Well, sure, and I you can certainly go a different way about using them, but the general idea is that these are actually four CMC cards, right? 
Yeah, they are actually four CMC cards. And that's kind of the idea is, well, if all these other four CMC cards are doing poorly, maybe these ones are okay. So, obviously, that's yet to be seen. But that that is at least their reasoning. And to me, that makes sense. Yes. Like like I said, it's I think of it, it it's an experiment. And the problem, one of the problems that Jace had originally in standard was it was like a $200 card. And if they, they had said, you know, the, he's something that we've been looking at unbanning for a while, but there wasn't, you know, they didn't say it directly, but they basically said, we didn't want to unban this thing with no copies in the pipeline and have it shoot up to $300 because that's what would have happened because the floodgates for, you know, the, the reservoir of demand in terms of people that want to play this in modern is nearly boundless. Like I, I can't think of somebody that's played an Island in, you know, the past four years who hasn't been like, man, I wish Jason Mind Sculptor was legal. No, and I, I think you're totally right about that. He kind of is everything the Blue Mage wants to do on one card, right? Yes. There therein lies the problem. I mean he is a great blue card. And I, I like the way you said it too, that you you called it an experiment. Um I think that's exactly what this is, honestly, is they they came up with this idea that one you know, the format could be in a spot right now where it's hard to play four mana sorcery speed spells if they're playing... Like, if one's good enough, it's probably Jace, right? Like that's probably sure. just the best four mana sorcery speed spell you can cast. It does very well in Vintage and Legacy, so it's probably probably a very good one. So yes. if, if one was going to do good, it would be Jace. And they want to see... They kind of want to, you know, flesh out the actual power level of Modern. And... I, I think it really is an experiment because I think something they've proven to us in the past is they are willing to try unbanning things, and if they are still completely broken and they should not have unbanned it, they will reban it, like Grave Troll specifically. Yep. Um, that being said, uh, we don't know if they're going to reban it, but it's certainly a possibility. Right. Uh, to To that point. As of this this recording, which is Wednesday the 14th, um, if you don't already own Jace the Mind Sculptors, please do not run out and spend 150 bucks on a single Jace the Mind Sculptor. There is a reprint coming in three weeks. Just relax. Well, even more than um, that, like you can buy boxes of Eternal Masters still for not that expensive and if the price holds where it's at now people are going to start cracking open eternal masters boxes and then it'll be in masters 25 and you know there will be a way to get this card in the next couple months right i i would also seriously uh, because i really i really do feel like this is a probationary unbanning um, that just happens to uh, be facilitated by the fact that there are, there are more Jaces being printed. I wouldn't go out and build an entire Jace the Mind Sculptor deck from the bottom up. Like if you don't already have a blue white mana base, I think it would be like all those cards are going to go up, like Scalding Tarns are going to go through the roof. Colonnades are going to go through the roof. Um, you know, so a lot of that stuff is going to be inflated, especially in the beginning. So I would give it a little bit of time before I, I actually went out and spent like hard cash. See, I, uh, I agree with you completely on that. I think you're very right about building from the ground up. I would, however, say that if you, we're interested in playing a Jeskai deck, for instance, without Jace. I wouldn't be scared to go get Jeskai cards right now because if you get Scalding Tarn because you want to play a Jace deck, you're going to be able to play Scalding Tarn even if Jace goes away, right? So 
Yes. I, w- I wouldn't be scared about, you know, Scalding Tyrant. Obviously, Path of Exile, Lightning Bolt. These cards are cards that are just going to be in Modern and you will always get to play. So, I wouldn't be scared of buying those. I would probably not buy them at this exact instance because right. they're currently spiking. Most of them are, but give it a month or two and I think it'll be a good time to buy them. Um, yeah. So. Just, yeah, like I said, just just hang loose. Play it easy. Unless you got, like, just buku, you know, disposable income. And if you do, you know, I mean, maybe buy a t-shirt. Um, sure. Well, and, but, and to your note about, like, the probationary period, um, I, I don't know if people know too much about, like, the decks I play, but I, I like to play a foil deck in Modern, and I have a Jeskai deck that's completely foil. It's, like, one of my favorite decks. I've had it for a long time, and I really like the deck. And I have Jace the Mind Sculptors. I had them from... I had them in Commander decks and random. I got them for a Legacy deck I didn't play, but the point is that I had non-foil Jaces, and I am not buying foil Jaces to put in this deck, even though I'm for sure going to play Jace in the deck until right. we kind of see what happens, because it's a very expensive card. If Jace gets rebanned, I don't want to have bought foil Jaces, but you know I'm going to use I'm going to use the ones I have instead of you know upgrading them or whatever. So um, we are we are actually <laughs> honoring this probationary period on the cast, if you will. I want to just give some people give people some perspective in terms of the last time that we had a four mana planeswalker that wins the game on its own if left unchecked. Uh, Nahiri, when she came out, was 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 that, and and technically still is that. Um, if you play Nahiri, you plus her twice, and then you Emrakul, you win the game. Essentially, yes. But, I mean, uh, yeah, you win, basically. Um, there there are some important differences. Um, the, the first of which is she does not die to Lightning Bolt. That is that is a, a critical Jace piece that I think a lot of people overlooked, myself included, um, when sort of thinking about how, how he lives in Modern. Um... Nihiri comes down with four loyalty, plus or twice, and you, like, loot, loot, Emrakul. With Jace, you play Jace, hope they don't have a lightning bolt or a lightning helix, or any any other way to do three damage, of which there are many. And then you brainstorm... And then if you don't have an empty board, he's probably going to die. Now, can you certainly play in a different pattern to minimize that possibility? Yes, absolutely. You know, and you can build your deck in a way to maximize your Jace survival rate. But there, it's also not impossible to build your the deck on the other side of the table to not to minimize the J survival rate. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I think your Nahiri explanation is spot on here. Um, they are very similar in a lot of ways. Obviously, Nahiri is, is worse than Jason Mines Gold, but I don't think anybody's arguing that. It comes with uh, deck building restrictions and that you have to be two colors. Um, it makes you play an Emrakul, which is generally a dead card in the decks that are playing it. Right. Um, but Nahiri works well with Emrakul. It, it has some bonuses in that it lets you continually loop your graveyard so you can kind of never get decked, which is relevant in some scenarios. Yes. Um, it is a very powerful... Uh, it's a it's a powerful way to beat certain decks where it wouldn't be able to beat because sacking permanence is very effective against, say, indestructible things or whatever. Sure. Um, but, yeah, Nahiri is definitely worse. Like, if you plus Nahiri twice, you get it to eight, and then they kill Nahiri, and Nahiri didn't do anything... And Jace kind of has this stacking effect in that it's like, if they brainstorm three times, you kind of lose the game. Um, now, obviously, you can play your own card draw to mitigate that. Like, if you're if they're brainstorming and you're, you know, you have a tireless tracker going, you're cracking two clues a turn or whatever, well, you might actually just be able to keep up and Jace isn't just necessarily going to win. But it, it kind of has this... this this situation going on where it's like if they play a Jason brainstorm and then you bolt it and they play another Jason brainstorm, it's it's almost like they have a Nihiri on eight at that point, right? So it, it's it is a different card, but honestly, like yes, Jace is much more powerful than Nihiri, but 
their play patterns aren't totally different in the sense that it's like, yeah, a four-mana sorcery speed thing, you play it, and if it lives a couple turns, you win, right? So uh, the thing that I did when Nahiri came out, because everybody was playing Nahiri Emrakul decks, was I just played two Dread Boars. Sure. And it was fine. Like, super fine. Um, like, I still wasn't happy to lose to it, which I still occasionally did. I was, I was in fact, very unhappy to lose to it. But I didn't, I didn't lose to it disproportionately with a very small change to my deck that I was playing at the time, which was uh, Mardu Tokens. Sure. Well... Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're totally right. And the other thing, too, that I actually kind of like about Jace is that he makes Bolt a lot better. Like, you, you already mentioned that, but I think recently there's kind of been this trend that Fatal Push is just better than Bolt in almost every single way. So a lot of people are just playing Fatal Push. Like, there are black-red decks that play zero Lightning Bolts and just four Fatal Pushes. And I think now that there's a very meaningful difference between the two, and there are very, very real reasons to play one or the other, is kind of awesome. Uh, it, I, I mean, obviously, obviously it, it could be bad because I don't know if Jace is too good. It's, it's kind of annoying, but like, it, it is cool that it puts you in this scenario again where you got to have to choose between, you know, your one minute answers. And now maybe, maybe Path to Exile is just the clear worst of the three, even though there's times where it feels like the best, you know? Well, if, I think if you had to pick two, you would pick Bull and Path. Right, like if you could only for for whatever reason, if you were if you could only play two, I think you would play Bolt Path. Um, I think if you could only play one, you still would play Path because it it is the most widely applicable. Um, it's kind of the one that's never dead, right? But like th- th- you, that's what that is actually what I find interesting about it now is that it might be Bolt now because now Bolt is never dead, and the fact that it can kill a Jace. Like if you have two paths in your hand, and your opponent plays a Jace. You know, you you kind of just <laughs> kind of screwed, right? Yep. Yeah, you're right. So I, mean, th- I I do like that. I like that about the card is that there's now this threat that made it, it's weird to say because Bolt was just the best card in modern forever, right? But it made Bolt good again, I guess. Sure. So that is interesting. Um, so that's that's uh, that's that's something um, early on. Just just as with Nahiri or any time there's like any new hotness, he is going to be everywhere in Magic Online. So if you are not in the mood to play either Jace Mirrors, if you're going to be playing Jace, or getting Jaced if you're on the other side of the table, just wait. Just hang loose a little bit right now. It's just like wall to wall Jaces, or you can do what I'm going to do for tomorrow, which is build a Jace Hunter deck and stream that because that is going to be hilarious. This is actually pretty sweet. I'm, deck I'm just going to or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just going to it's going to be like probably just black red with like bolts, dread boars, vexing devils, surgical extraction, pithing needle, just like literally the the best game one against Jace deck that you could possibly have. And then, cause like, right. It's, it is like, it is lantern esque in the sense that if you lose game one, game two, even though you get to sideboard, like they only have to win one more. Yeah, that's true. And so, you know, pre pre boarding in this particular meta game, like as a LARF, I think is going to be fun. Sure. And I just I want to see how many Jason Mind Sculptors I can kill. No, that's fair. I mean, it's fun. I would definitely try it. I, I like the idea too. Like, you need to play some grinding cards. You should try some treasure maps, dude. I like treasure. <laughs> maps. It's like a card that they're gonna have trouble interacting with. Yeah. Um, I also like. I, I want to play Vexing Devil against them because, sure. like, it just it does damage. Like that's that's the thing. Um, like Vexing Devil and Browbeat both uh, do damage, just not lose life, so you can redirect that damage to him. Sure. I don't think I would play Browbeat so it's like, still, though. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. 
have no bad talk about browbeat. Dude, I've played a lot of browbeat. I started the first deck I ever played in modern was a burn deck with four browbeats, and nice. That that deck was uh, it was was fun. It was definitely fun. It wasn't very good, but it was a lot of fun. Sure. Um. So, like I said, just hang loose. He will. He will subside. The the other Um, thing too to consider is like it definitely is going to be everywhere on MTGO. So. If you've never played against Jace, it is a good time to hop in and get some experience against the card. Because it definitely is the type of card that kind of uh, redefines the game. Like Planeswalkers do in general, right? Where they like create this sub-game that is now, I have to kill this Planeswalker or I'm going to lose. Um, yes. But but Jace kind of does it in his own unique way. And it's probably going to be pretty important for the next couple months to kind of understand how that sub-game plays out, right? Um, so in, in that sense, it's a good time to kind of learn it, but if you don't want, you know, to really hop in and kind of figure it out, we have some notes here on Jace's sub games. So obviously Jace has never been in modern at any point. It started the format on the band list, but it is a card that we played in standard and it sees play in legacy and the patterns with it are... Pretty similar because obviously the card doesn't change and um, you know it it, it it does some things well and it is poor in other aspects, right? So um, what exactly does Jace do? Uh, well, the, the first thing and kind of Jace's most famous thing that people reference when they talk about Jace the Mind Sculptor is the Jace test. Um, I think the line from uh, Pat Chapin's song was... Cost four, and you don't have fate or you don't have haste. You fail the test, and his name is Jace. And I think that's true. Like you definitely do not want to be playing sorcery speed four drops against Jace. Um, but at the same time, like we already run over it, like further up or you know previously in the cast, you don't really cast sorcery speed four drops anyway in modern. That kind of just doesn't exist. Right. Um, so. In modern, it's more like you don't want to be playing sorcery speed three drops. Um, getting your two drop bounced by Jace is bad, but it's not horrible. Like if they play a Jace and bounce your Tarmogoyf, like that's not great for you. Like you're not super happy about that scenario, but at the same time, it's not awful either. Like you can live with replaying your two drop; it doesn't set you back that far. Well, it's trading. It's trading down. It is trading down. So yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is, it didn't cost them a card. Like it's just. They, they spent four mana, and they got a Jace, and they returned your two-drop to your hand. So, like, it it, it kind of makes your two-drop cost four, in a sense, but that's, like, okay, right? Because they spent well, four Well, and it also thing. puts them on two loyalty. Yeah. Which is relevant. Um, but, really, like, if it's a two-drop that's getting bounced, it's like, you spent four mana for your card, they spent four mana for their card, like, once you've played it a second time, so it's not that bad. Like... You don't want to be, you know, you don't want Jace bouncing your creatures. You'd like to avoid that. But if the card is pl- prevalent in the format, he's going to bounce creatures. So, like, you'd rather have him bounce one and two drops than four drops or whatever. Right. Or like, six drops. Like, if you're, like, playing a fair worm coil engine and that gets bounced, that's just, ugh. That's, that's no good. If you're if you're playing a fair worm coil engine, your plan has gone awry. I mean, maybe you're a Jace deck that's like, yeah, I'm blue-red and I have a worm coil. I don't know. You probably shouldn't be playing that worm coil, but... No, I mean, it's... It, honestly, oh, man. It, like, him in Blue Moon is going to be miserable. That's not going to be f- great. Uh, the, the bounce is particularly disgusting when combined with Remand and Blood Moon. There's going to be a lot of remands. Man, that's the other thing. Yeah, if you... Yeah. I, I would not want to be a Gurmag Angler right now. Oh, that's, yeah. That's that's going to be Rusty Buckets. Man, getting your, getting your Gurmag Angler remanded just feels so bad. Yeah, so that's... And, well, okay. and is bad. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Was, so that's what we came up with, with, three or more. And like you just mentioned, uh, Delve 100% applies here. Like, Delve creatures are sorcery speed creatures that cost three or more. Like, it doesn't feel like it when you cast them for one mana, but the second time when they literally can't cast it and Jace was, like, just literal terminate on it for a minus one, then it actually will feel horrible, right? Yeah. Um, now, the stuff that is good against him is probably stuff that you're either 
already playing that you just need to play more of or very slightly different things. Um, like Restoration Angel, he's he is very bad against flash creatures. Especially so, especially three power flash creatures. Right. Um so I, I think Restoration Angel is is pretty much perfect right now. Um yeah, Restoration like, Angel's great. Like I would I would be putting and I will be probably like I I'm gonna keep playing for the time being I'm gonna keep playing my Naya Thoughts of Ruin deck. Sure. Um but I'm definitely going to be adding Restoration Angel on the sideboard because why not? Well, yeah, I mean, like, it's think about the, like I I love Restoration Angel against Jace, and like think about this play pattern, right? Like you have just a Tarmogoyf sitting on board. Your opponent has four mana and a Jace in hand, right? They cast their Jace, and the obvious thing is bounce the Tarmogoyf. Now I'm going to get to untap with a Jace in play, and. He'll probably have a Timer Goyf at this point, but now I have a Jace, I get to start brainstorming and find an answer to the Timer Goyf. That's kind of what Jace does, is like, if you get to untap with it and play, you kind of just can start digging for answers and you just take over the game. So, if they play Jace and they go to bounce your Timer Goyf, and you cast Restoration Angel and blink your Timer Goyf, now all of a sudden you get to hit them with an unchecked Timer Goyf, they're tapped out and you get to kill their Jace with your Angel, right? And they got no cards off of it. In fact, they're just down a card. Right. Um, so that's... That's personally how I am going to attack it. Um, I probably will also play Lightning Bolts, which I'm not currently doing, um, because I have Seismic Assault, but Seismic Assault only doing two um, is not... I'm not wild about that. Um, I do like being able to uh, tutor for Caverner Souls or Baseju with uh night of the reliquary pretty happy about that um like on its face like if i just tried to play the deck as it is right now i would get murdered sure i need to make a couple of different choices um and the same thing goes for you know every every other deck needs to you know kind of consider the cards that they're already playing as they relate to is this card also good against jace um Etch Champion, amazing. Cranial Plating, great. Yeah, Cranial Plating uh, just kind of turns any creature... Like, Cranial Plating in itself is a haste threat as long as you have bodies sitting around. Like, the 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 blue player is not going to be incentivized to play Jace and bounce their Ornithopter, right? Like, they just don't consider Ornithopter a threat. But then, right. you know, next turn Ornithopter is a 6-2 flying creature and it kills the Jace, right? Yep. Yeah, Ornithopter Signal Pest actually is a really great home for that like which is not normally the case yeah. like you wouldn't normally put cranial plating on a signal pest but um in in this particular instance if they happen to have some kind of board like if they have a snapcaster or something like that and that's your option like do it yeah, you want to kill that jace the second you get a chance to um well and, and on the topic of etch champion like i think that's a little thing that's going to happen to the format is like Maybe, like, right now a lot of Affinity decks are, like, 2-Edge Champion, 2-Master Ethereum. Well, maybe now they're just, like, 3-Edge Champion, 1-Master, or even just, like, 4-Edge Champion. Right? I, I would... If it was me, I would go 4-Edge Champion. Um, yeah, and I but, I think that's totally defensible, but, it, like, th- I, the point I'm trying to make here is that it's, like, a very small change to, like, a, an already playable deck, right? Yeah. Um, See, so you you put Manlands. I, I honestly... I think one of the very logical evolutions of Jace involves basically like also playing Tarmogoyfs. So sure. I don't know if I necessarily love manlands that aren't creeping tar pit. Well, I love creeping tar creeping pit. Creeping tar pit's great. Uh, you know, colonnade is great. Um, sure. You want three power ones, but I would be happy to play blink moth and ink moth, especially if I had like ravager or cranial plating, you know, like I think sure. they're good. Like ink moth nexus is great. If you have like, like pump spells and exactly in fact, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, like the the Jace decks could be playing Spreading Seas. They could be playing, you know, Field of Ruin. Like these these are cards that the decks can and probably will play in some form. But at the same time, like make them have to play those cards, right? Like the 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 way you play Magic is not concede because they have the answer. It's make them answer your question, right? Like pose the question and then make them answer it. So I, I do like Manlands. I like 
I like like if you're playing a green deck, like throw throw a treetop village in there. Like it it might you know it might not be great all the time, but the fact that it can answer a Jace the Mind Sculptor for no cards is very relevant. Yeah. No. I and honestly, like I I like treetop village. Anyways, I I play treetop village in a lot of my green decks, and three power is relevant. Trample is relevant. Um, you see, you had collected company. I'm sort of medium on collected company unless it is collected company into a combo. Well, I like it into a combo, but I also like it into big things. It's just because it's a flash threat, right? Like, sure. It's obviously it's not like like collected company in a Knight of the Reliquary itself isn't great because Knight of the Reliquary is not particularly good against Jace. Um, but collected company into like spell queller is fine. Like if you hit a spell queller in a noble hierarchy, you get to kill their Jace or. You can just counter their Jace with Spell Queller. Um, you know, like, Court of Calling 2, I, I kind of want to put on this list just because it's just a flash threat to get an answer to Jace, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, Geist. I'm I'm even pretty okay, like, running Geist into a Snapcaster just to kill the Jace with the Angel. Yeah, no, I mean, I would, I would play that. Like, I, w- I would, I would do that. I mean, if your options are let them keep brainstorming or kill their snapcast, use your three drop to kill their snapcaster and their jace. Like, do it, <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, mantis rider. Yes, asterisk. Um, most jace decks, especially the early builds, are going to be running four spreading seas. So. Y- it does have blue in its casting cost, but you need to be prepared to have your land base disrupted, um, which I don't think... I mean, like, Aether Vial is a good solution to that, but... Well, the, but the the reality of that situation is, is, like, as the humans player, you're still casting stuff on, like, turns one through three, right? So, like, if you're, like, you know, Champion of the Parish or Noble Hierarch into some other creature like Thalia's Lieutenant or Thalia or any of those cards, and then they're playing Spreading Seas, now the board state is in such a spot where they can't cast their Jace, right? Because it's just going to die to what's on board. So if they are just, like, instead answering those cards, like, if you're, if you're, like, Champion of Parish and they're, like, Lightning Bolt it, and you're, like, you know, whatever, Thalia's Lieutenant or Thalia or whatever, and they're, like, Fatal Push it, some some sort of answer to these cards, well, now when they play their Jace on 4, your Mana Rider just kills it, right? Sure. I, I think that they're they're going to be pretty sweeper heavy. Sure, I um, I would agree with that for sure. So it's I don't know what the solution is. Like on the one hand, I almost want to just put selfless spirit in there, uh, because then you're only cold to like terminus, which I know you think is not going to be a thing, but it is definitely going to be a thing. Dude, I'm, and I'm I'm pretty I'm ready off to terminus. go to the mat. I'm ready to go to the mat on this one. I I like I like Terminus as a card, and believe me, if I thought it was good, I would play it. But it just seems worse than Supreme Verdict to me. It just seems like so much work to like get not that much of a payoff. Uh, strong strong disagree. Telling time, Jace, uh, that Merfolk brainstorm. Well, like, like my, my problem with those cards is like you're playing a Jace deck. Like half of the half of the strength of Jace decks is that you get to play. Very, very powerful cards, and you get to play cards that are situationally powerful, right? Because, like, the Brainstorm... On, like, Jace is a very powerful card, and the the Brainstorm on Jace lets you shuffle away... Like, you could play, like, a Wear Tear in your main deck of a Jace deck, because you wanted to kill an artifact or an enchantment, and it's very powerful sure. in spots where you want it, but it is just dead in other matchups, and when you have a Jace, you can shuffle it away. But you don't really want to play de- cards that are, like bad. So like I, I, I do I, I do get that Terminus is situationally powerful and you can shuffle it away. But the problem is when it is not when you're casting it for six mana, it's not a modern power level card. Like there is zero t- terminus that sees played now because there's not a good way to cheat it before Jace, right? Sure. Um and then But now but also like telling time is not a modern power level card. Like nobody plays telling time. Telling time is bad. And also that Merfolk is also bad. Like it's not a card you want to play. And I get it that like you might do it because because the miracle on Terminus is so powerful that like you could set that up, but I just don't see it being a long term thing. Like I think if it ever did get good enough, it would just be too easy to just hate out and destroy. I guess. Sure. Um, you put brawl in here. I 
do not know why that is. Well, Brawl is on the list in the sense that he's a haste threat, right? Like, a lot of the times, the way Storm kills you is, like, you played your threat, then they go, Brawl, ritual, 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 gifts, you're dead. Sure. Um, Bogles. I mean... Can't bounce hexproof. Can't bounce hexproof, yep. I mean, that's... And they're, you know, they're also, like... There, there have been points of time in the past when they have played Spirit Mantle, and I don't think it's a stretch to imagine that that could very easily be a thing again. Um, I think the list is playing Spirit Mantle now. Spirit Mantle is great. Does it? Yeah, I've lost <laughs> to it, man. I was playing uh, Mono White, and the guy slaps a Spirit Mantle on his guy. I'm just, yeah, I can't block, so like, <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> you did. Yep. Reality Smasher. Uh, great right reality smasher kills a brainstorm jace through a snapcaster mage block yep also actually even kills a fate seal one yeah, yeah if they just play jason plus it. like trying to beat you, you just smash him right yeah. um i will say um, that the two cards that typically pair with reality smasher look horrible against jace so like thought knots here and well thought here is good in the sense they can take take jace from their hands so maybe thought here is better but yeah uh endbringer looks awful against Jace. So that yes. is not one I would be particularly interested in right now. No. Um, Vendillion Click. Click's great, would, yep. You know, like, that would that would definitely be a thing. Like, Click you, bottom your Cryptic Command, like, well, probably bottom your Supreme Verdict, right? Like, Click you, even, hit your Supreme Even just verdict. don't bottom anything. Like, Click is just like a, I see what you drew, and I'm gonna kill your Jace is just fine. Like, click that is, like, literally just peak without the draw card. Like, you, you, you're you happy to play that card in modern a lot of times. Sure. Um, you put Primeval Titan Valakit. I think that is a very rosy uh, estimation of how primetime is going to be in this world. Well, so primetime might be worse in modern, but I can tell you from standard, when Jace was legal, one of the decks Jace hated to play against was Valakit decks. And it's because one of the few things it couldn't grind out was land drops. Like, it couldn't grind out your opponent making land drops because that's kind of all it did was, like, your opponent doesn't get to play, but they just, like, keep playing lands, right? Sure. And so if you have a Valakid in play and you're playing Mountains, well, you just kill their Jace. Like, the fact that it does three is very relevant. And bouncing primetime is not not usually where you want to be in Modern. Like, if they played, like, a turn four primetime and got some stuff and you played Jace and bounce it, like, you're probably just literally dead the next turn when they cast primetime, so... Um, yeah, like, it it might be not great in the sense that Jace decks will probably be good against Primeval Titan decks just because they have counter spells, but right. at the same time, Primeval Titan decks have generally been pretty good against the blue decks in Modern, so it, it could be good. I, I could see Scapeshift going back to a twin era type build with updated cards where they just, they, they play Cryptic just to keep up. I could see that. I mean, they could also just play Jace. Like, it's not out of the question for this deck to play Jace. <laughs> sure. Like, that's a thing. Um, but the deck also gets to play Lightning Bolt. Like, that's the removal spell of Primeval Titan decks, generally, right? So that that's also good against Jace. Um, well, they're playing they're playing Anger of the Gods. Or, no, I'm sorry, they're playing um, Sweltering Suns. Sure, and they, they could play those, but generally the lists have Lightning Bolt somewhere in them, like in the 75, somewhere. right? Um, but the other thing too is like it's not out of the question that you would play through the breach, and through the breach is like great against Jace. Like they cast Jace, you go all right end of turn through the breach, Titan untap, you're dead. Yep. So that's true. I mean, it, like maybe the current build isn't great against Jace decks, but there are ways to build Primeval Titan decks in that they are good against Jace decks. Yeah. Um, Aether Vial we already talked about. It yeah, just um, the fact that Aether Vial makes your cards uncounterable and gives them flash. While not being, like, super good against Jace itself, the fact that, like, it gives him, like, all these abilities is good against blue decks in general. Yep. Um, Kitesail Freebooter? Man. Duress got real good, turns out. Yeah, especially ones that uh, aren't Inquisition of Codes, like, specifically that can take things that cost four or more. <laughs> yes. Um, so, I, I mean, like I said, Kitesail Freebooter, already a good card definitely got better um yep. now that said against removal heavy decks like they're they're going to be playing some number of supreme verdict and possibly some number of wrath of god 
Um, you know, so like freebooter isn't your permanent answer, but it is your take the Jace out of your hand, like six you with two Mantis Riders and try and close out the game as fast as possible answer. And that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm in for that. Um, obviously blood braid elf. Um, yeah, we will get into know. blood braid elf in a second, but yeah, that one is, that one has yeah. historically been very good against Jace. Um, but what we're saying is you need, you need to have a plan. Um, thought sees is great. Duress is really good. Um, I would favor thought sees over inquisition for the time being. Like if you were playing like two, four, um, or like three, three, um, or even three, one, I would go, I would could just go all in on four thoughtsies and two inquisition. Um, or maybe even put the inquisitions in the side and run duress in the main. Like I'm, I'm not above that. I don't think I would go so far as to like completely get rid of I. Okay. I still think that card's very good. Um, but I like, I don't like, I don't hate going like four, two, especially if you were going to go like six spells, I don't hate going f- like four, two in favor of thoughtsies. I think you're spot on there. And I think, like, if you were concerned about the damage Thoughtseize is going to do you, then I would be, like, interested in going, like, 3-3-1 three, three, with, like, Thoughtseize, IOK, and Duress, with the Duress being the one. Like, sure. I could see that. I, I could definitely see that right now. Um, Dreadbore is a card, you know? Uh, like, Sorcery Speed is not great, but being able to play it for two mana is is a real thing. There are very few two mana spells that just clean answer a Jace. Yeah. Um, and some of the other ones, uh, despite being cards that I really like, like display of dominance is such a sweet card. Um, and they're definitely not going to see it coming. It's only one color. It's one in a green. It's an instant. It destroys a blue or black permanent. And you can, I think non-creature it, well, permanent. or, or non creature permanent. Yeah. Um, or, you can have it has a bunch of like long text, but it's basically like gives your permanence. Uh, they can't permanence can't be targeted by blue or black. I don't remember if it's spells or spells and abilities. Um, well, the fact permanence that- you control can't be the targets of blue or black spells your opponents control. The fact that it's just literally one in a green and it kills both Jace and Liliana is super relevant. Like, I think that's a yes. very real card. Yep. Um, and it has sweet art. Like, I, w- I wish a lot of the Rakshasa stuff from Khan's block was more playable. But anyways, that's regardless of which. So um, that Maelstrom Pulse, always great. And Maelstrom um, Pulse stock went way up. Not, well, not, uh, not even way up, just the fact... Yeah. Like it was already a very good card right now, but it goes up even more in the sense that it can kill Jace's. It is a it's a good hit off of Blood Raid Elf, so it is. Um as as is Hero's Downfall. Um not every three color build is gonna be able to reliably support double black, but if you can, uh I love this card. Yeah, I don't I, I think if you were playing Blood Raid Elf, you'd play Pulse before Downfall. Sure. But yeah, I mean, I, like a blue black deck is definitely going to want to consider downfall at this point, or like, like red black would probably play dreadbore, like you mentioned, but you know, like, I don't know. Well, I think blue, like blue black, probably plays downfall, but I think blue black definitely plays counter squall. Yep. So here's downfall. Good. Um, I post board. I like like I like lost legacy. Um. Like if you, if you just stone cold lose to Jason Mind Sculptor, I'm I'm down with Lost Legacy. Like comes down on turn three because you know a lot of the Jace decks early on, especially they're just gonna like dirtal. They're gonna play tap lands, um, you know. And and if you're playing like a Heroes Downfall Lost Legacy enabled deck, um, like if you see Colonnade go, that's amazing for you. Cause then you just like tear their hand apart for two turns before they can do anything about it. Um, so it's 
Thoughtseize is our red elemental blast for the moment. Like it's it's our best counter spell. Yeah, it's kind of what we got. You know, and unless they print red elemental blast in Dominaria, which would be dope, but Dude, I, I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah, I don't hope they don't do that. That card is too powerful. <laughs> if they painted if they if they did red elemental blast where it only countered a blue spell and not destroyed a blue permanent, I think that would be fine. I agree with you. I think that would just totally be okay. And they're not gonna do that, um, but they they might unlikely. they might do that card, but I don't know. Um, Disdainful Stroke, Spell Pierce, uh, Jace's Defeat if you want to go super deep. Yeah, I was going to say, um, the Disdainful Stroke and Spell Pierce are the most likely ones. Like Those are cards I'd be very, very happy to play right now. Yeah. Jace's Defeat and the other ones we're going to mention here, uh, less happy, but I could see a world where they're totally right to play. Yeah. Uh, Counterflux. Like, Counterflux isn't bad as is, like, your the casting cost is a little bit prohibitive. Like, Blue Blue Red isn't the greatest but can't be countered is a real thing and like being a hard counter is also a real thing so i i'm not totally off counterflux well and the fact Um, that counterflux is also good against storm is not zero like that is certainly you know something like a reason to play the card right um i put guttural response as kind of like a an also ran because it's going to hit a lot of the other things in the j stack um, and it's very easy to like, just kind of throw one or two on the sideboard. Um, yeah, I could, I could see a guttural response. Um, I'm, I'm less in on the card in the sense that it's a very, very narrow card, but if Jace is actually ve- like, if Jace starts to dominate and the metagame starts becoming more blue and blue, like I could see it. Like it could definitely be, you could tell me that there's a metagame where I want to be playing guttural response and I would believe you. I yeah. guess. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, like, the fact that there's a dual decks mind versus might printing that has a ape warrior with a sword uh, as the art instead of fish getting cut in half. Not that fish getting cut in half isn't cool. Like, it is cool, but Screaming Monkey is super cool. Dude, all right. You know and... what? That's fair. If you're playing a Kurt Ape deck and you get to Guttural Response something, you probably <laughs> just won, like, that. you won the tournament on flavor alone. Fla- flavor win. Yeah, that's a huge flavor uh, W. Yep. All right. Now I'm down. I'm down. Tribal Monkeys. Oh, uh, Simeon Spirit Guide. <laughs> Casting it off Spirit Guide is even better. That is awesome, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just out of nowhere, they think they're safe. You're tagging with your Kurt Ape. Like, I'm going to exile them. <laughs> my, my Spirit Guide and Guttural responds with this Ape counter spell. <laughs> Blamo. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> if I pull if I pull that off someday, I'm just gonna I'm gonna hang it up. I'll just be like, you know what? I'm gonna frame this. Oh my god! Frame the spirit guy that I cast it off. Dude, of. I hope frame someone sends a response. picture on MTGO of just <laughs> go over responding something off a of spirit guy. That's awesome. Oh, so wrecked. Um, you know the biggie too, which we touched on. You know, lightning bolt. Just plain old lightning bolt. There's an old loading ready run video of. Uh, Graham, I think his name is. He's like, ah, oh, he's like, it cost me, you know, eighty five dollars a piece, which you can tell how old it is because that was actually like a very reasonable price for him. Um, he's like, I finally got all these Jaces. I've got four of them in my deck. It means I can't lose. And then he's like, Jace the Mind Sculptor, brainstorm, and the other guy's like, Lightning Bolt. Yep. <laughs> it's like this lightning bolt cost me 25 cents which also tells you how old it is because lightning bolt had to have been in standard for it to be 25 cents because lightning bolt is always a dollar or more oh yeah yeah that had to be like right when m11 was still being open or m10 or whatever um so don't don't count out the humble lightning bolt um I put exquisite firecraft on there yeah shout out again. shout out to tj rogers redbeard mtg yeah right? Was his call on that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think Exquisite Firecraft is is at least sideboard playable, um, and it is it's relevant in a way that it hadn't been previously. Like it sees play in Legacy because you know well, it saw play in Legacy, Legacy because is, of uh, counterbalance, right? It was a it was a way to beat the counterbalance lock. 
Uh, I mean, kind of. Like, it doesn't blow up the counterbalance. Well, no, but, like, if you um, needed to do four damage, they couldn't counter it. Sure. And, honestly, I have recently, like, when Death Shadow was, like, very, very popular, Grixis, I was playing Grixis Shadow at a local event, and the guy had no cards in hand. I was at, like, three. I had a very lethal Death Shadow in play and, like, two stubborn denials in my hand. I thought I could not lose. And the guy just top decks Exquisite Firecraft and kills me because I can't counter it. Yep. And I think yep. that's, like, going to be a common experience with Jace decks is that they kind of have to take some damage to get set up. They have to, you know, spend a turn taking damage with uh, putting their Jace in play. And um, if you get Exquisite Firecraft, you might just die. And on so. the, the burn note, uh, one card we thought was particularly... Out, out of the burn deck, they got a lot worse if Jace is very uh, playable, was Eidolon of Rhetoric, or uh, not Rhetoric, the Great Rebel. Yeah. That card is a lot worse if Jace is popular, because you know you play your two-mana thing, they get to play a four-mana thing that doesn't deal damage and bounce it to make you replay it. Um, that You know, like, replaying it's not that bad, but in burn it's not great, because you'd rather just be dealing damage. Yeah, I don't know if it's... The problem is that an, an unchecked Jace will win the game on its own. Um, and once you have an Eidolon in play, you have to take damage in order to get that Jace off the table. So I'm not in love with Eidolon. I'm I'm down with, like, siding out Eidolon. Yeah, I would definitely side out against Jace. I, but, I mean, I could just, like, see a world where maybe, like, the right thing to do now in Burn isn't just jam for Eidolon. Maybe you're, like two Eidolon and two Shrine of Burning Rage or something. like That That could be correct now going forward. Yeah, this also could be a reason to finally, finally a reason to play Harsh Mentor. Sure. I mean, I, well, Harsh Mentor is not very good against Jace either because it doesn't trigger on Planeswalkers, which is something I've hated about the card since it got printed, but... I thought it was any activated ability. Uh, not Planeswalkers. It's like anything except Planeswalkers. Which is... An artifact, creature, or land. Yeah. Doesn't deal with Planeswalkers, which is really annoying, because in standard it would be so, so good if it deal with, if it like did damage based on Planeswalkers, but it doesn't, so it's like, just play Chandra and kill it, and yeah. Um, Womp. Womp. But yeah, I mean, like, like I think Shrine of Burning Rage is good. Like, you, you could, honestly, like, I, I don't think it's necessarily wrong to put Exquisite Firecraft main deck. Like, I think that's one of those cards that's like, right on the edge in burn and like could be played like it's a card burn has always kind of considered but it was always just a little too inefficient and like maybe now it's the right time so yeah. who knows i mean it's it's no right like i mean there was there was a world in which like boros charm existed and flames of the blood hand was still played yeah i mean flames yeah that that card definitely still saw play there were times um uh, so I, I don't think it's without the realm of possibility to see that again uh, in the in the sense that Exquisite Firecraft is almost unconditionally better than Flames of the Blood Hand except for the Skullcrack Claws. Um, but I, I would be... I guess Jace decks maybe play Sphinx's Rev, but they probably don't play many of them. They probably play one. No, I would imagine Sphinx's Rev is not a card people play anymore. That would be my guess. Um, so I, I think you probably could get away without it. Uh, yeah, I think like as Jace becomes more and more popular, exquisite firecraft is a card burn, burn players are going to want to look a lot more at. Yeah. Um, and also, um, what is that? What is that card? Scab clan berserker keeps popping into my head. Um, I think this is actually a, like a Bloodbraid card. It's like a hasty Eidolon, Probably. kind of. Yeah, it's it's better if you cascade into it. Um, but but maybe maybe burn. Um, like it's a three mana two two haste and has renown. So when it deals combat damage to a player, put a counter on it, it becomes renown. And whenever an opponent casts a non creature spell, if Scab Clan Berserker is renowned, Scab Clan Berserker deals two damage to that player. I don't know if it's better than Gutter Snipe. Maybe it is. I think it's better than Gutter Snipe. It relies on them casting spells. I mean, Gutter Snipe doesn't do anything on its own. Like that one's always going to do damage as long as you get the hit in. Gutter Snipe. Oh, whenever you cast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What? Gutter Snipe got new art and Iconic Masters? I had no idea. 
Huh. Neat. All right. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So, but uh, Gutter Snipe actually is is neat. Um, but Scab Clan Berserker, I think, is is something. I think there's something there. Yep. Um, all right. Enough, Jace. On to Bloodbraid Elf. Yeah. Bloodbraid Elf is great. Um, it is... Well, so you know that whole thing we mentioned earlier about, like, probationary period and, like, uh, be careful, you might not want to buy your foils, any of that stuff? Yeah, none of that applies to Bloodbraid Elf. Go nuts with this one. Yeah. Blood, Bloodbraid Elf is great. Um, I think you can probably... I don't know if the price will come down. It probably will. Um, like, if it also ends up getting reprinted in M25, then obviously. But. Well, see, I, I think the price is going to come down on it just because, like, I just played a bunch of games with it in the last couple of days, and I don't even think the card's that good. Like, I, I stand by what we said last week on the, the cast, that the card is fine. It's a good modern card. Like, it is. I think it is in the realm of playable Sorcery Speed 4 drops in Modern. Like, it does enough to make you consider playing it. But at the same time, it's just, like, it's not that good. Like, it, it like it, it's good, but, like, people, like, have this fear of it for when it was banned because of Deathrite Shaman and when it was, like, this terror in Standard. But the reality of the situation is the card's just a reasonably powered 4 drop and... It, it can feel really good when you're already winning. Like, it feels unbeatable when you're already way ahead, but when you're behind, it's just kind of whatever. And, I mean, it can still be good. Like, don't, don't get me wrong, the card's fine, but it's not... It's not amazing in the way that Jace is amazing, I guess. And it sure. definitely feels well, worse it doesn't, than Jace. It doesn't win the game on its own, right? It, it provides value. It provides immediate value for decks that don't often get immediate value. Um, sure. And, like, do I think that it is better than you are giving it credit for at the moment? Yes. Um, do I think that it is, like, format breaking? No, absolutely not. Um, like, originally, the first home that I'm going to probably put it in is in, like, uh, like Teamer Aggro um, with... Like Telling Time, Ancestral Vision, uh, Tarmogoyf, and then like 40 something other cards, and kind of see where I land with that. Um, because like it plays well with Serum Visions, it plays well with Ancestral, obviously. Um, sure. And if, if you're t- like, so the place I was playing it in was like just the Jun deck, where the idea is to just cascade into like any of the good three drops, like. You cascade into Colgan's Command, or Pulse, or Liliana, or Tireless Tracker, and all of those are fine, they're good to cascade into, but the card just, like, wasn't, it wasn't overly impressive in that scenario, because it was literally just like you were casting one of those three drops, and then you paid another mana for a hasty 3-2, and, like, yeah, paying a mana for a hasty 3-2 is good, but, like, you can also just play Wild Nakato, like, you can just have the, that three, you, you can have a 3-3 three, three on turn one, right? So, so sure. like, I, I think the card's good, but it it is more on the three drops than... It's more on what you're cascading into, I guess, than the actual body itself. Because just in modern, the three-two body isn't as relevant as it was in standard. And if this card is like absurd, if this card becomes like too good in modern, it's because it's doing something very unfair. Like like what you're trying to do in this shell is cascade in ancestral visions. And in that scenario, the card's very very good. So like, if you're abusing the cascade, like you're cascading into hypergenesis or like. Uh, seismic Assault in a Swans deck, maybe. Something crazy like that. Then, yes, I think the card will be very good. But when you're not doing something like that, I I just think the card's whatever. I don't think it's that good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to require, like, building time and testing time. Um, I do, like I said, I do think, like, just the regular, the value that it generates in, like, a Jun shell or, like, a Grixis shell is is definitely there. It it has so many more deck building restrictions than Jace. Like you can just put Jace in any deck that has access to two blue mana and it's and it's there. Sure. And you can certainly make like a four color nonsense deck 
very easily that plays both, right? Like, why would you pick just one? Sure. Um, and, and you can also, right, like, let's not forget, making four mana on turn two in modern is not hard. No, it's definitely doable. Um, the other thing I do like about the card, and this this isn't speaking to, like, its brokenness, but I love that, like, the thing that it wants to do is hit a three drop, right? Like, that's where you get the most value out of the card is if you cascade into a three drop. And sure. green already has this situation going on in modern where it's, like, very, very incentivizing three drops, right? Where it's, like, it has elves and it has... Uh, Collected Company, which kind of has the same thing of wanting three drops, and it has, uh, like, Noble Hierarch and Birds, and all of them are, like, centered around cast three drops. So in that scenario, it fits very well into what the color green is doing in Modern already. So I, sure. I do like that. I, I, I think there will be homes for this card. I also think that it's really sweet in the Ponza deck. Like, I think it's a card Ponza wanted very badly. Like, you're not, you were not the first person to say that to me today, and I... I just cannot even imagine that, like, in a world where people are going to be going heavy on, like, 26 land control decks, that Ponza is even remotely playable. Well, Ponza is awesome in the sense that, like, it just, like, one, it's like a meta call in the sense that, like, if people are all on Jace decks, Tron decks are good, and if Tron decks are good, Ponza's great. And two, sure. it does have, like, one of the good ways to beat control decks is to just outmana them. Like, that's why Tron beats them. And if you're, like, it ramping your mana while destroying your opponents, like, that is generally good against control decks. Now, the deck is kind of weak to counter spells, but Bloodbright Elf is also particularly good against counter spells since it casts two spells. So, in that scenario, sure. I could see it's doing some of the stuff that this deck is looking for. Uh, I guess. I don't know. That's that's another one. I mean, if you, if you don't have any Ponza cards, I wouldn't go out and buy... Ponza because it's good against Jace. Like that's no, no. I don't think it's particularly like good against Jace. Like I, I don't think that. I, I think Jace decks will kind of bully that deck around. But like, if they're going to survive now, they're definitely playing four Bloodbraid Elves in Ponza. Does sure. that make sense? Yes, I guess if I was if I was in if I was in to make that choice, then it would be another. It would be a simple choice for me to also play Bloodbraid Elf. Sure, but I think that it's like the it's the best worst home for it. Yeah, I, I could see that. But on the topic of homes for Bloodbraid Elves, we don't really know where it's going to go. I mean, a lot of speculation is Jund, right? But um, I, I've heard Swans mentioned. Uh, you know, we just talked about Panza. Um, I could certainly see it in like a bigger Naya Zoo type deck. Um. You know, you said Teamer, Teamer Aggro, uh, you know, Teamer teamer with Jace, I've heard mentioned. There, there's, like, a lot of places you could put it, but we don't know where it's going to go. So, what we want to see right now is your Bloodbraid Elf deck. And what we're going to do is we have, sitting right in front of me, our four uh, Alara Reborn Bloodbraid Elves. Uh, the original printing. Uh, OG BBE. Yep. Uh... So if you want to submit us your Bloodbraid Elf deck list and you want four copies of this card, go ahead and do that. You can submit them uh, on Twitter to either me at A22EN or Aaron at uh, T, the number one, and then Thoughtseize. Yep. And uh, I, I think we can also do it on on uh, email, correct? Yeah, email uh, thoughtseizeu at gmail.com, the Facebook page. Uh, Facebook.com slash turn one thoughts. He's all spelled out. Um, all of those things will get to us. Yep. And uh, if you submit one and, you know, you don't have some blood bread else and you want to play set, we're, we're going to be giving them out to a listener. So, you know, shoot us a deck list. Uh, the one we think is the sweetest will we'll be happy to uh, send you a play set. Maybe even, maybe even a play mat. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, do that. Do me, yeah. Do the legwork on that that teamer aggro deck with uh, ancestral vision because I I don't know if I'm gonna have time to brew it. So if you wanna, somebody wants to do the the initial goldfishing testing for me, that'd be uh that'd be great. You'd be heavily favored, shall we say? Look, all I'm saying is I want to see some lands destroyed. <laughs> 
Sure. Maybe I mean, yeah, it, look, Cas- Cascade into Molten Rain is going to be oh, good. it sounds so good to me. Like, I, mean, it, I played Molten Rain in Jessica. It was awesome. So good. Yeah. Card's great. <laughs> um, and thankfully, you can't Cascade into uh, Boom Bus anymore. So. Oh, yeah. Thank God on that. That was actually a thing when Blood Raid was in Standard, by the way. Ugh. Yeah, that was, people did that. That's gross. Yes, it was. And, and like, not the good kind of gross where you're like, yeah, that's no, that gross. Really you're like, gross, like, gross, gross. Uh, all right. And you're going to play Green Black. Yeah, so um, this week we did a, or at least I did on Twitter, um, having trouble deciding what I wanted to play at the next SCG. I uh, decided to put out a, uh, the, the SCG is this weekend, I decided to put out a Twitter poll for... You know, people follow me on Twitter. I let them pick my deck. Told them, you know, at the beginning of the poll, um, hey, you know, you vote. Uh, deck gets the most picks. I will, I will play. And uh, even if it's not the one I want to play, uh, Green Black Rock with Field of Ruin won the vote by a pretty wide margin. And I can say that I have been testing it a lot. Um, not super happy about where it's positioned, but. Uh, I made a promise, so I'm going to follow through. We're going to try and play this deck. We're going to see how it goes. Um, I think the deck is good. It's playing good cards. Uh, uh, I'm happy Jace isn't unbanned yet, because I would definitely not be playing this if Jace was legal, but it's not for this event specifically, so I'm going to play this. Um, I've been getting kind of bodied by Tron, because Tron's everywhere. I'm playing Field of Ruin main deck to try and beat it, and I'm still losing. (laughs) Sure. Which is kind of annoying, but it's, uh, you know, it's part of the modern format. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think I have some ideas on the deck. The one thing I have learned is that Tireless Tracker is messed up. I think that card is, mm. I think that card is just better than Blood Red Elf. Just straight up. So good. Tireless Tracker is ridiculous. It's, I mean, it's really, really strong. Um, it's also sweet with Field of Ruin, but besides the point. But yeah, so I'm going to... I'm going to play that this weekend. Hopefully it goes well. Hopefully I can get it on camera. Um, I think the deck's sweet. Liliana the Veil's sweet. Tyler's Tracker's sweet. And I need to ca- cast some turn one thought seizes, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, you finally you finally live the dream. Yeah, it's strange, man. Before I joined the cast, I played Jund and, and or Abzan in Modern for over two years. Uh, it was like my deck of choice, and then I got on the cast, and I just wasn't casting turn one thought seizes, you know? I've been on Jeskai and Mono White, but... We're back home and it feels right. Yeah. <laughs> Reunited and it feels so good. Um, obviously, it never it never went away for me. Sure, but actually, now you know now that I'm I'm now that I'm playing a Naya deck or like basically red green splash white deck, uh, I've not done it in a while, but I will do it again. Yeah, I need to figure out where smallpox fits into. Jace universe, and I've not figured it out yet. Oh, blood braiding into smallpox is kind of sweet. You can't, you don't, um, s- you don't sack the blood braid. It's on the stack. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I'll have to try it. Like I said, I'm, I'm a lot more excited to play with blood braid elf than I am to play with Jace. It's just like not my style. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating on the other side. Of the the Jace Bloodbraid equation. Well, Aaron, um, I have some very bad news for you. Then, what's that? You are ineligible to win these four Bloodbraid Elves, man. You can't I am you can't get them. So you have to find your own, I guess. And well, I already have some. Oh, well, lucky I, you. I bought <laughs> lucky them. You then, I guess <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because I bought them like two unbanning like before the not the last unbanning announcement but or ban restricted but the the one before that i was like at my lgs and i was like eh, this probably gets unbanned someday you know and i paid like whatever 50 cents for them sure and now rich rich beyond my wildest dreams oh so rich yeah. it's not kitty rich but it is blood grade rich it's yeah yep <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're going to keep it, keep it pretty tight this time. Um, we just wanted to sort of jump in, throw in our two cents. Obviously there's a, a world of discussion that we could have had. Um, but we didn't want to put out like two 90 plus minute episodes in the same week and be like, listen to our voices for five hours. Um, sure. so we, we wanted to just sort of hit the highlights and, uh, give away some elves 
and uh yeah so what we get uh, yeah, what we can promise though is that on the uh on the next cast there'll be plenty more talk of jace we will uh you know we will be playing a ton on magic online um i'll be playing in an yes. scg uh and we will be you know keeping tabs on where this is going because this is the type of move that could drastically change the format we're not yes. saying that it we are- definitely will but it could we are 0% to not talk about Jace in every episode in which he is legal. Sure. I'm going to be talking about Jace. Right. I love Jace, so I'm going to be, I'm sure. going to be casting that card a lot. All right. So, yeah, that is all. Uh, we will catch up with you next, not next week, but the week after. See you guys.